Next, uh, we're going to consider addressing uh, another fundamental defect in the implementations we've considered so far, uh, that those implementations are only good for strings. What if we want to have queues and stacks of other types of data? And that brings us to the topic of generics. All right, so we implemented stack of strings, but uh, in applications, uh, we have all different types of data that we might want to implement, like a uh, stack of ints, say, or URLs, or cars, or vans, uh, or whatever uh, data that we might be processing. So uh, how are we going to implement stacks and queues for that types of data? Well, the first thing uh, that we might consider, and actually we're forced to consider this one in lots of programming environments, is to implement a separate stack class for each type of data that we're using. Uh, it, that really seems unsatisfactory. Uh, we have our carefully crafted code that does array resizing and so forth, uh, and we're going to copy that code and uh, change the uh, data type string to the data type van or int everywhere. And what if we have hundreds of different types of data that we're processing? We're going to have hundreds of different implementations. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that situation at the beginning of Java, we were stuck with that, and there are plenty of programming languages where basically we're stuck with that. Uh, so what we want to look at is uh, a modern approach to avoiding having multiple implementations for each type of data. Uh, so uh, the, uh, a quick hack that is widely used uh, is to use casting to implement um, the, to reuse the code for different data types. Uh, so we make our implementation with type object, uh, so everything in Java is a subtype of object, uh, and then uh, the client, when the client comes to use it, uh, will uh, simply cast the result to the corresponding type. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I think this is an unsatisfactory solution. So in this example, uh, we have two types, uh, we have two stacks, uh, one of apples and one of oranges, uh, and then it's up to the client when it pops something off the apple stack to cast it to apple uh, to uh, keep the uh, type checking system happy. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, uh, the client code uh, has to do this, uh, this casting, uh, and it's kind of an insidious bug if it doesn't quite get it. Uh, so the th third attempt uh, that we're going to talk about uh, uses generics. Uh, and th th that way, uh, the client code doesn't do casting. Uh, we can discover uh, mistakes in uh, type uh, mismatches at compile time instead of at runtime. So uh, in this case, we put with generics, we uh, can have a type parameter on our class, uh, and that include that's inside uh, angle brackets in this code, uh, and then we can. Uh, <coughs> Uh, if we have a stack of apples uh, and uh, we try to push uh, an orange onto a stack of apples, uh, then uh, we're going to get a compile time error because that stack uh, was declared to only consist of, of apples. And uh, just the guiding principle in good modular programming is that uh, we should welcome compile time errors and avoid runtime errors. Uh, because uh, if we uh, can detect an error at compile time, then we can ship our product or uh, deploy uh, our implementation of an API and have some confidence that it's going to work for uh, any client. Whereas if the error is not going to get discovered until runtime, uh, it might uh, occur uh, with some client development uh, years after we have deployed our uh, software uh, and be extremely difficult uh, on everyone. Okay, so uh, actually uh, with a good generic implementation, uh, it's not difficult to uh, simply uh, <coughs> take every place that we use string uh, and replace it with a generic type name, uh, as in this code here. On the left is our implementation of uh, st <coughs> a stack of strings using linked lists. Uh, on the right is a generic implementation. So every place that we use a string type on the left, uh, we uh, use uh, the word item on the right. 
Uh, and at the top, in the class declaration, uh, we declare in angle brackets that item is the generic type that we're going to use. Uh, the implementation could hardly be more straightforward, uh, and it's uh, uh, an excellent way to solve the problem of handling multiple types of data with one implementation. Uh, with arrays, it doesn't quite work, uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, all programming languages, there are many programming languages nowadays have difficulties with this, uh, and uh, Java's got a particular difficulty. So what we would like to do is just declare a new array uh, uh, using our generic type name item, uh, as in the highlighted line here. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's the same. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Java does not allow generic array creation. Uh, so uh, there's uh, various technical reasons uh, for that, and you can read extensive debates uh, about this on the web. Uh, that's uh, going to go beyond our scope. Uh, uh, for now, uh, what we need to do is put a cast in to make this work. Uh, so we create an array of objects, and then we cast it down to an array of items. Uh, now, uh, in my view, uh, good code has zero casts. Uh, so we want to avoid casts as much as possible because it, it really uh, is declaring some kind of weakness uh, in what we're doing. Uh, but in this case, uh, we have to put in this one cast. Uh, and so uh, we'll refer to that as the ugly cast. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make you feel good about the code. Uh, it's not something that uh, you'd come up with uh, on your own. Uh, and that's an undesirable feature, I think, for so code so simple as this. Uh, but fortunately, uh, we can get through pretty much uh, everything that we're going to do in this course uh, with just knowing about this one ugly cast. Uh, so now when we compile this program, uh, we get a, uh, a warning message from Java. It says that we're using unchecked or unsafe operations and we should recompile with uh, minus x lint equals unchecked for details. So we can go ahead and do that and it says that you have put in in your code an unchecked cast and we're warning you about that because uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, be putting in unchecked casts. Uh, and okay, that's fine, uh, and you're going to see that when you do uh, compiles using code like this. Uh, I, I think maybe uh, they might have added uh, to this warning statement, uh, you know, we apologize for making you do this. Uh, it's not our fault that we had to do that. Uh, we had to do that because of your requirement about not allowing us to uh, uh, declare generic arrays. Uh, so with that note, uh, please uh, don't think there's something wrong with your code uh, if you follow our prescriptive and, and get this uh, a warning message. Uh, okay, there's one other detail that uh, Java takes care of, is, and that's what about primitive types? Uh, <coughs> Uh, so uh, the uh, generic type that we're using is uh, for objects and, uh, and we're casting down from an uh, array of objects. Uh, so uh, in order to handle generic types, uh, we have to use Java's uh, wrapper object types. Uh, so uh, integer with a capital I is wrapper type for int and so forth. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with that. Uh, and there's a process called auto-boxing, which automatically casts between primitive types and wrappers. Uh, so all of that handles uh, uh, the uh, problem of dealing with primitive types kind of behind the scenes. And the bottom line is that uh, we can uh, articulate an API for generic stacks that works for any type of data, and we've got two implementations, linked lists and arrays, uh, that uh, perform uh, uh, very well for uh, <coughs> any type of data uh, <coughs> using uh, the, uh, the resizing or linked lists uh, as we've described. <coughs> 